If you're a big swim team and you like to order a lot of gear, maybe you ought to check out Swim Outlet Team Division for these reasons. Swim teams receive a 10% discount on bulk orders. Swim teams or organizations get an 8% commission on referred sales. You'll also like their customization services, which is affordable and available at all times during the year for all team gear. With over 50,000 items in stock, you can get most anything you want. Swim Outlet Team Division. You need to try it out. You'll be glad you did. This is the Morning Swim Show for Wednesday, October 9th, 2013. I'm your host, Jeff Cummings. Brendan Hansen called himself a student of the sport and he put that knowledge to very good use, winning multiple NCAA titles and Olympic medals, among other accolades. Now that knowledge is being passed on to the younger generation of swimmers in Austin, Texas, as he's now a coach for Lost Creek Aquatics. And Brendan joins us now in the Finis Monitor from his home in Austin to talk about that. Brendan, it's good to see you. How are you? Good, Jeff. How are you, buddy? I'm doing awesome. So uh, how's Austin down there? It's good. It's getting to that part of the year where uh, our fall, which means it's not 105 degrees, it's just 85 degrees. But all's good, man. Everything's uh, pretty good at home. Man. Well, you're making me jealous. I, I try to get out there <laughs> once a year, and it's never enough, and just it always makes me miss Austin more and more and more. Yeah, this is a pretty special place. I was lucky enough to make the right decision at 18 to, to move here and go to school here. And now uh, it's a really hard place to leave. And I've just decided to stay here and raise a family here and, and enjoy everything Austin has to offer. Well, speaking of raising a family, how's fatherhood treating you? Uh, it's, uh, it's an interesting deal, I'll tell you that. Um, probably the coolest thing I've ever done, hands down. And I've really enjoyed it. And it's just funny. I mean, you just... As soon as you think you figured it out, man, they change on you and just let you know you know nothing. <laughs> so <laughs> so it, uh, she's nine months old now, and so we're on the verge of walking, which means I want to buy every wrestling mat I don't know of and pad my entire house. But. <laughs> yeah, and you'll be, uh, you'll be having to chase her around. She'll never sit still. Yeah, you'll know. I'll be, I'll be 10 pounds lighter. <laughs> <laughs> Well, let's, uh, let's talk about coaching here. You're now coaching with Lost Creek Aquatics. What got you convinced that you wanted to get into coaching? Well, I, honestly, when I was a sophomore in college, Eddie Reese pulled me aside and said, there's going to be a day when you start coaching. And I said, nah, I don't know, coach. I don't know if I want to coach yet. And then I'd go on the national team, and Jack Barrowley would come up to me and say something like, hey, the day's going to be great for the sport of swimming when you start coaching. And I said, man, I don't know about that. And... Um, after the Olympics in 2012, I told myself I'd take eight months off and just kind of enjoy life a little bit. And we were starting to fending was kind of all over the place. And I uh, eventually sat down with one of the club coaches here in Austin and kind of voiced my frustrations with club swimming and where it was at, at the time. And that conversation led to uh, me uh, being a partner in a team here. And, and eventually, all of a sudden, I'm on the pool deck and I'm coaching. And it's almost like... Uh, the coaching role picked me. I didn't pick it, just kind of like the swimming did, too. So um, I'm working with uh, Steve Jones, who's my partner here in town, a guy that I really respect as a coach. And, and uh, we started this team. We took on two more locations, and I have 300-plus swimmers in the span of six weeks. And um, I feel like I bit off more than I can chew, but at the same time, I feel like uh, it's really uh, where I need to be and what I'm doing. I really feel like I'm making an impact on, on these kids. When are you going to go to Eddie and say, you were right? Oh, man, never, because that goes straight to his head. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I know it does. <laughs> no, I mean, if everybody, he knows he's right, you know, so there's no reason for me to go tell him that. that um, but, uh, you know, he's never been wrong with me in my 12 years that I've been with him. So, uh, you know, I should have listened to him a little bit sooner. But, you know. Us, we just got to figure out what we need to do as when we're doing it, and kind of took me a little bit longer to get to where I am now. But uh, like I said, I, I every day I'm on the pool deck. I absolutely love it, and I just feel like at the club level, too much talent falls through the cracks. And my goal with my team is to uh, is to get all that to rise to the top. When you first started coaching there, I'm sure the first question all the kids were asking were, can we see your Olympic medals? So did you get all that out of the way the first day and say, okay, now I'm your coach and not an Olympic swimmer? 
I wish it was the first day, but uh, it was probably the first two weeks. Um, you know, they're extremely excited, and uh, just like as if I went to a clinic in the U.S., which, I, which I've been doing for 10 years, and, you know, they get very excited. They see you on TV. They know about you. You're one of, you know, you're one of their role models or idols, and so it took me a little bit of time to get out of that realm and kind of get more into the coaching role, um, but at the same time, I think uh, me being able to bridge the gaps between uh, the elite swimmer and, and the club level enables these kids to really realize from the coaching stand, my coaching standpoint that hey, this is just a normal guy and he chased his dream, he chased it as hard as he could and look where it, look where it got him and, and so I th think uh, of my kids uh, that have the talent to make it to the next level I think now realize it, really realize it because I'm living proof of that every day on the pool deck. Well, you're one of those few coaches who doesn't just coach from the pool deck. I've seen pictures of you actually getting in the pool. So is that something that you said, you know, I want to be able to get into the pool with them, or is it something that evolved to, you know, I, I need to actually get in and work with them hands-on? I just think that it's funny. I was talking to my mom the other day about it, and she's like, Brendan, ever since you were four years old, you never did anything at 80 miles an hour. Everything was 100 miles an hour. You're the most driven work ethic based kid I've ever met and you know I, I just wanted to, to do things that separated myself from other coaches right off the bat and I feel like one of the biggest mistakes that a coach makes is not getting in the water and using visual aids and helping them these kids figure it out right off the bat and you know I still have that ability right now only being a year out of swimming to get in the water and and show these kids you know the correct technique and and the ways to do the strokes correctly and so if I have that tool in my back pocket, you bet I'm going to utilize it. What if, I know you've just been doing this for just a couple weeks now, but what have you seen as a, as a challenge that, is, that you're working to overcome as a coach? I think the biggest challenge right now is that uh, this generation of kids that are growing up are, uh, you know, they're in a technology world where they want something, they can get it right away. And, um, you know, like where I used to go to the library, get the book, pull it out, study, figure out where the thing is. They could just Google it, find it within five seconds. And that mentality doesn't work in the sport of swimming. Um, you have to put your time in. You have to put your, your days in and your workouts in to be successful. And so that's a hard pill to swallow for a lot of these kids that are getting immediate recognition, immediate reward right off the bat. And so um, to have to teach that, I think, is the number one um, challenge of every coach in the country right now, but one that I've kind of been hit with right off the bat and so uh, it's nice to almost lead by example because I told the kids I, I trained for eight months that's a race that's 59 seconds long so you know and and it's funny the captive audience that you have when you when you have the gold medals and the accolades and everything behind you it's not just some other coach telling you it's Brendan Hansen. Well I'm sure that, that the name your, the name that you bring and the accolades that you bring behind it probably kind of helps connect them to that a little bit more. Do you find that, um, you know, a lot of these kids understand that quickly, or is it still because they're so technology-driven that you, you, you have to kind of hammer it to them every day? I think a lot of it is the atmosphere and community that you build in your team, and I feel like that uh, one of my, mine and Steve's goal right off the bat was to build that atmosphere and get these kids to realize that when they come to practice, they're, they're here to chase their dreams, they're here to chase their goals and we all know as a coaching staff what they want to achieve and um, it's it's amazing to me when you have that consistency every single day we've six weeks into the season right now and every single kid on my team has bought into the program has bought into that idea and I, 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 I have role models now as a coach you know and I look up to these coaches and I see a common denominator amongst all the great swimming coaches in the country and and one of those is that when you you know you're going to work for things and, it, and you're going to challenge yourself every day and I'm going to give you sets that are going to challenge you and you know it's amazing to me how the kids respond to that atmosphere and that mentality and every single one of my kids now has, has changed the mentality of oh I got to go to swim practice too I can't wait to go swim and they're so they're so happy while they're there and they leave with a smile on their face and to me that that's infectious and, and it's just uh it's just awesome and fun to be a part of it's not work for me Jeff well, that's cool. That, that really makes things a lot more fun, I'm sure. Uh, yeah. How long is it going to be until we see you, Brendan Hansen, the coach, on deck at Junior Nationals or even Senior Nationals or Olympic Trials? 
Well, I have some stud 13, 14 year old girl, girls lighting it up right now. So if I had to say, I'd say in about four or five years, I would definitely be at the senior national level with them. I, they're, they're just everything that I was as a kid growing up and they're just chasing their dreams. The boys are kind of maturing a little later and they, you know, I still got to get them from underneath the water <laughs> sometimes. But uh, um, I'll, I'm definitely going to be on the junior national um, stage right off the bat, maybe even the senior national. I'm having a lot of uh, rollover from other cl club teams here in Austin that are kids that are wanting to come swim for me. And, you know, we still have spots open for Lost Creek. And I, so I have a lot of really, really good swimmers that are coming to swim for me right off the bat. And I take that as a challenge. And, you know, I understand that I've only been coaching for a little bit of time, but I have great resources and I have, and I'm, like I said in the beginning of this interview, man, I don't, I don't slow down for anything. And if I do something, I want to be the best at it. Well, it's gotta, it's gotta make you feel good that a lot of these kids want to swim for you. And they probably realize that, um, you know, you have a lot to offer them. Yeah, I've already had two or three of Eddie's kids from Texas that want to come swim for me and not him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That would be a very big news, but I would, it would be understandable news. <laughs> Yeah, let's keep that off the record, right? That's yeah, fair. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, you still exercising, staying fit at all? Doing any swimming, any running at all? Yeah, I still, I still swim twice a week. It's just part of my life, man. I just, I love it. I love that, you know, period of time where I can be in the water. I've done it for so long, I, I can't not do it anymore. Uh, I'm training for a half marathon right now, um, which I'll do at the beginning of January. And then I'll start up uh, triathlon season, which in Austin starts around April or May, and it leads all the way to August. So I'm still very active. You know, so much of coaching, I feel like, and to be successful, if I looked at that whole mentality, was just practice what you preach, you know. So so much of what I'm doing is, is I'm going to work out, and I'm going to chase my dreams and goals and go after things as hard as I can because that's what I'm expecting of my swimmers. And so I feel like, uh, you know, one of the things that's going to, help me lead this team and help me get to where I want to be faster is if I uh, if I practice what I preach. Yeah, well, I would say probably I just want to just train for 100 breaststroke, not a triathlon, but, you know, <laughs> I guess that it goes. Dude, I need to, I, I'm not ready for that just yet, Jeff. I'll let you uh, tackle that one. Okay, well, they, that's good news for me. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Brandon, before we let you go, I know you're a busy guy. We're going to submit you to our final five. Uh, these are five questions we ask to kind of just get to know our guests a little bit better. Um, we're going to start off with the first question, which is, if you could change any of the strokes in the individual medley, how would you change it? How about how would I not change it? I would not add the dolphin kick to the breaststroke pullout. Well, that's a question for later, but we'll, I'll remember that. Oh, uh, that's one of the five. Yeah. <laughs> But uh, we'll get to that one. We'll talk about that one in a minute. What's a career that you would most like to try? I would love, love to be a surgeon. I think if I didn't make the Olympic team, I would have been a surgeon because I, I would love to help athletes with shoulder and knee problems. Yeah, okay. What's a career you would not like to try? Uh, I would not want to be a trash man because I know how bad my trash smells sometimes. <laughs> and I would hate to go day to day dealing with that <laughs> especially with baby trash yeah i don't know what you're talking about <laughs> all right so the question wait, this is the question we're going to ask if you could change or add any rule in the swimming rule book what would it be so would it be the dolphin kick and the breaststroke pull out yeah i just have a hard time jeff believing that you know for so many years we're okay with not having a dolphin kick and then all of a sudden now it's a problem and it's almost like we're just uh molding these rules for the cheaters out there and you know it's, it's getting out of hand and the people that are making the decisions are the wrong people you know I mean I just it's it's becoming not breaststroke anymore in my opinion and and uh, and changing the rule a little bit but I'm gonna you know I, I grew up with watching guys like Mike Berriman and Jeremy Lynn swim breaststroke you know and they were they were just works of art and beautiful to watch and amazing and it's a shame because I feel like their performances are tainted by us changing these rules and going back to, you know, you know just because officials don't want to make a, a challenging call. I mean, it's it's just uh, if someone doesn't, if somebody breaks the rule, you got to call it. You can't just change the rule. Right, right. All right. Last question: Where do you like to go most on vacation? 
Uh, let's see. I think my favorite place is to go out west. I've been out to Wyoming the last couple of years, um, going out there camping, fishing, and hunting with my buddies. And it's just, um, man, I remember, I remember the first off the plane at, at 30, and I got out to in Wyoming and was in Yellowstone and all those areas is out there just told myself i was like man why did it take me 30 years to get here it's just absolutely beautiful god's country sun up to sundown man there's just it's just uh you just look out the window and it's paintings every time you look at it just scenery art it's just art man it's awesome and that's the place i go uh when i need to get away from it all yeah i know you're a big hunter and fisher so that definitely is the place to go yeah you're not gonna ask me about the beard man this is for uh my halloween costume i figured i'd not buy one i'd grow it so I'll definitely post a pic, and you guys can have it as the best Halloween costume when it uh, all comes together. Is this going to be kind of like a Duck Dynasty beard or something? <laughs> Man, if I was growing a Duck Dynasty beard, I'd have a lot more money in my bank account. But uh, <laughs> no, it's definitely not long enough for that. I'll figure something out. I told the kids on my team I was going to dress up for Halloween, so they're, uh, they're expecting something good. Well, we got about, two, about three weeks for that, so we'll, we're anxious to see it. We look forward to seeing the picture. Thanks, Jeff. All right, Brendan, thanks so much for joining us. It's great to catch up with you. Congratulations on the new role as a coach, and we wish you guys at Lost Creek all, those, all the success in the world. Thanks, man. I'll see you on the pool deck. All right, looking forward to it. Later. All right, so that's going to wrap it up for today's edition of the Morning Swim Show, and we hope you enjoyed it. You can see past episodes on SwimmingWorld.tv and keep up with the latest in aquatic sports by going to SwimmingWorld.com. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you tomorrow.